So I've had this mower, it has to be over a year. It's been sitting in the yard, and all of a sudden I've got the fever to get it going. I've got it pulled up in the garage. I don't know if that little engine's gonna run or not. But if it don't, we'll find a different one. We gotta get it going. Let's get the pressure washer pulled in, see if we can get it to fire up. So here's the pressure washer. The guy went 25, he couldn't get it to start. The recoil wasn't working. He fiddled with it a little bit. I give up. Would you take 20 for it? Sure. So the recoil, I've got two here. I've got another one over there on my homemade boat motor. That one looks pretty good. That one looks kind of cruddy. This one still works, just needs a string. This one needs work and has a string. So I'm going to cut the string off, put it on this one, put this on there. I just got to decide if I want it to be a black engine or a red trim engine. I'm kind of thinking black would be better. Yellow mower, black engine. Let's go with black. So here's the internals on the recoil system. The spring is all rusty. I'm going to clean it up, put a little oil on it. Maybe oil that up a little bit, put it all back together. It should work just good. So the starter system has been rebuilt. When you pull it, the little Wolverine claws come out. It pulls the rope back in. We just now have to decide black with black, red with black. I think black with black. The air filter looks new. We'll get it put all back together. First, I'm going to pour a little gas in this hole. Let's see what happens. Choke is on. Key switch is on. I don't see any fuel cutoff switches. So, let's see what happens. good runs good starts easy I'm gonna take the pressure washer part and start fitting it to the mower so the engine is now unbolted from the pressure washer cart little lightweight five horse I'm thinking something about like this as high as I can get it and still have the hood closed we get a tape measure and see how high that's gonna be So the little engine is sitting in place. I've got it sitting up on about six inches of wood blocks. If we close the hood, the hood clears on this side. That's what it looked like. That's a pretty cool look. If we jump over to the other side. And so here on the exhaust side, this is where the exhaust will come out. It's below the hood. The heat shield is not actually touching the hood. That's just about perfect. Anyway, uh, if we pop the hood, we might keep the battery box in case we ever need lights, but we don't need this regulator. We don't need all that wiring stuff. Only thing we really need is a kill switch. When you ride, you can kill it. When you want to ride again, you pull start it, start going. It is Cub Cadet update time. I've got a five inch pulley down here on this shaft. It actually fits. I've got about a three inch pulley up here. It fits this shaft. The only problem is small pulley up here, big pulley down here is gonna make it slow. It'll have lots of torque, but it's gonna be slow. It'll be good for testing purposes. I'm also wondering if they make a belt that short. And we may have to put a pillar block back here to support this shaft. We'll see. Anyway, I was thinking I'm going to cut up that pressure washer cart for a motor mount. If I could somehow make that pivot, that could be your clutch. It would be this pulley, this pulley, and a belt. And when it pivots up, that would engage. Something to think about. However, I don't know if there's room under the hood for the engine to go up and down. I may have to have it fixed and just get another pulley out here to act as my clutch. So the next step, I'm going to start cutting up that motor mount plate. The motor mount plate has been cut out and that pipe will probably be used for exhaust pipe. Now we've got to fit this to the mower. So I needed the motor plate to be six inches high and these little feet are six inches high. I need to make a notch here and then we can sit this in place. We can put some bolts through it, bolt it down and on the other end I'll make some kind of legs back there and we're almost done. So this is what it's looking like so far. This front's sitting right where it needs to be. If I drill a hole in this bracket in this foot down there, it'll go through the tractor and put a bolt in there. Then if I replace this wood with a metal bracket, same thing on the other side, this part will be done. As far as the belt and pulleys, I've got this little short belt. If I put an idler pulley here or on the other side, that should work. I think what I'll do next is take all this out and try to get this clutch disc out of the way. 
So the Cub Cadet has been given a lift kit. I gotta crawl in there and look at the drive shaft. We may take it out and make a whole custom new one, something a little bit longer. So I just pulled out the drive shaft and the clutch. This is the coupler that hooks it to the transmission. I'm gonna pick up two new bolts. That one's about done. So two new like that, and I need four motor mount bolts. And where the pulley was, I found this little small pulley. That'd be a one-to-one -one ratio. If we put it here with the rotation of the engine, we'd have three reverse and one forward gear. I don't want that. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a longer drive shaft, put the pulley up here, spin the engine around. Then we'll have three forward and one reverse. And that means we need about four foot of five eighths rod. So just for a three day weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 12 hour days, I'm off Monday, Tuesday, that's today's Monday. I only work two days this week, Wednesday, Thursday, then I'm off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Anyway, on Saturday I left for lunch, I picked these up, this is Marketplace, $50, brand new, never mounted. And this was on Sunday, I fitted this drive shaft, it's 5 eighths, 4 foot long, just what I needed, drive supply. It was $20, but they gave me a $10 credit, you've earned a $10 credit, you want to use it? Yes. These nuts, bolts, and washers, that's for the drive shaft and for the engine. Uh, so that's about three bucks worth. And so on this drive shaft, this is the coupler that hooks it to the transmission. Once we put this on, we'll drill a hole through. It's pretty much done. On the other end, we'll cut it off to the right length. We'll put this pulley on. I've got the three inch, I've got a five inch. This would be slower, more torque, less belt slip. This will be a little bit faster. I think I'm gonna try this one, three inch. Won't know until we try. Anyway, hopefully I can get this thing running this week. Maybe by the end of the video, get in some sand, get in some mud. So I've got the motor mount sitting in place. It is level. I just welded on my first bracket. It goes down to an existing hole that needed a bolt anyway. There's another one on the other side. We'll probably do the same thing over there. Then we can mount the engine. So this is what it's looking like so far. I've got the drive shaft in place. It's going all the way back to the transmission. I just made a mark here. I'm gonna cut it off there. We could almost do an auxiliary pulley up here for something, but I don't really know of anything that we need a pulley out front for. Anyway, I'm um, gonna get all this out of the way and try to get that drive shaft where it needs to be, get this mounted in there somehow. Then we can start working on that motor mount plate again. Here's my drive shaft being held up by the tripod. There's a level here. This little bracket should hold it level this way. The vice grips keep it from going in too deep. Let's get this hole drilled. So I've got my drive shaft sitting in place. It is level here. If we check it on the frame, it is level there. That's about where it needs to go, but I don't want that to interfere with my motor mount. What if we were to flip it over and mount it to the bottom of the motor mount? Something to think about. I gotta run to the store and get a key for the keyway. I'll take the pulley with me. We also need some random nuts, bolts, and washers. Maybe even a shorter belt. Just came home from Tractor Supply, I got a bag of random nuts, bolts, and washers. I've got this little belt. It is a 23 inch belt. That's just a guess. I've got these keys. One was missing, so they knocked a the dollar off. Let's see what we can get done. So I just stole a front wheel off of a John Deere parts mower. It looks good on there. It's not the right color yellow, and it's supposed to be white, but for now it looks good. When we decide what we're gonna do, we'll paint them white. Anyway, the engine's bolted in place and the hood actually shuts. If we open the hood, I've got the engine pulley on, the key is in, the Allen bolts are tight. The bottom pulley is on, the Allen bolts are tight, there's no keyway. I may have to come back and weld around this. So for the clutch update, I took this arm. This used to be a mower deck arm and I found this little tiny idler pulley. I'm gonna come up here right about like that and it's gonna pivot and grab that belt. Let me install it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's the clutch system installed. It pivots upstairs. This comes over, grabs the belt, gives it tension. That should work. Now I gotta find a way to hook this up and I wanna hook it up 
This lever on the side of the mower, which used to be the deck height, if you pull it like this, you start rolling. If you get in the mud and start slipping, you can pull a little bit harder. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but that's what I'm thinking. So I found this cable in a dumpster years and years ago. It was actually two of them. They've been hanging out in the rafters. Anyway, it goes up to the front. And I'm thinking if I want to use this arm underneath, they cut off all the arms that went down to the deck. I understand that for clearance, but now I've got no arms. So I've got this piece of steel. It's got about the right size hole in it. If I weld that on, make it about this long, hook this cable to it. This will be the back portion. And in the front, we'll make up some kind of bracket. That'll be our clutch. So I just built this nice little bracket. I'm about to weld it on right there. And this is what we're looking for. We're gonna like that. Just to leave this ugly butt homemade running board. We're gonna make bigger, better running boards. And it also helps me on mounting the clutch. Once we get the other end done, we'll be ready to go for a test drive. I think I'm gonna fire up the engine. It's in neutral now. Let's see how hard it is to start. I should probably choke it. So this side of the clutch is done. If we go around to the front, I've got to fix the other side of the cable. Uh, this is what it looks like right now. I gotta have something to hold it in this area, extend this bolt, and then that'll be attached to that arm. Anyway, I'll use this, and I've got several options. This one's too small, too small, too small, too small, too big, and then I found this one. I believe this is gonna be just right. So if we try to test fit this eye bolt, it goes right where it needs to be. There's a flat spot here, there's a spot there, if we line those two up, it snaps into place. Can you say it fits perfectly? Anyway, let me get this installed, snap that into place, extend that bolt. It's about time for a ride. So this used to be a bracket off the front of a cop car push bar. Anyway, now I've just drilled a hole. I'm gonna cut a line. It's gonna be a clutch cable bracket. So I just did a fine tuning on the clutch swing arm. It does not hit the pulleys. It's right in line with the pulleys. And if we look downstairs, I've got the front clutch cable bracket in place. Now we'll get the clutch in there, put a bolt in here, get it all hooked together and test it. So the clutch system is all installed. If we test the lever, the pulley swings. All we have to do now is install the belt. That'll take about two seconds. And then we're ready for a test drive. And eventually we'll put on some belt keepers. But for a test drive, this should be good. Let's see how that clutch looks in action. So it is technically, well, too dark now, but technically ready for a test drive. Uh, let's see. The eventual to-do list, this tire needs a new valve stem, and I want to put those two tires on the front of it. New running boards, I need to hook up the throttle, uh, some belt keepers. If we pop the hood, I don't think I'll ever hook up the uh, choke because you're going to start it here anyway. This is your choke. So choke it, start it, take the choke off. There's my key switch. I do want to put throttle and a kill switch up here. Other than that, I mean, if you wanted to leave me, oh, maybe a front bumper. I've got that nice piece of steel there. That'd make a good front bumper. But for now, I just want to drive it. See how the five horse does. 
So I just came in from the store. I picked up some paint. This is gloss white. That's going to be perfect for the wheels, for the hood. This is close enough yellow. Yeah, that's close enough. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure if I want to start with the yellow and the white now. I know I want the wheels to be white. Almost like nice wheels, nice tires, rat rod mower. I mean, for now. We'll see. So the electronics have been stripped out except for the wires going to that gauge. I'm not going to be able to use that gauge, but I left them in there. And there's also some wires going to the key switch. I also put one more bolt back here, right there, to hold down the back of the motor plate when you're starting it. It's got real loud brakes back there. So it is the next morning and I'm sure the wise thing to do would be hook up a throttle and a kill switch, you know, for control purposes. Uh, right now it's kind of running almost wide open. It's running at pressure washer speed. Anyway, uh, also be nice to have a running board, but I want to see what it does, how it goes. I'm going to get out in the open. We'll do some uh, test driving and we'll do top at pressure washer speed, speed. Okay, just zoomed in. Let's do some clutch action. So we just survived our first test drive, uh, belt only came off, I think it was three times, and the shifter is a little bit iffy. That's in first, that's reverse, first, when you go over, that should be second, that should be third, but sometimes when you're putting it in first, it's going into third, it's something you gotta watch. Anyway, I wanna get the throttle hooked up so we can idle it down, and I wanna kill switch, that's my next two things, even before running board. So here with the Cub Cadet, here is a throttle that I want to put on it. I just took two bolts out, took the air filter off. That loosens the carburetor. If you lean it just the right way, you can unhook the governor. Here's the old governor rod. Now we're going to hook the throttle straight to this butterfly. So the old throttle handle, it was cuter, but it's all rusted up. That's no good. I've got the new one installed. It flows really good. We just have to now hook up the other end. So on the throttle cable right below the kill switch, I drilled a hole. It's a good tight hole. The cable is good and snug. I might put a couple zip ties or maybe some hose clamps as the years go by. Uh, anyway, it's already hooked to the carburetor. 
it's ready to go. I just gotta bolt everything back together on the carburetor. Before I do that, I'm gonna try to tap into this ground wire, have it work here and from the key switch. So here on the mower, I just wired up this switch. If it's in the off position, that is the run position for this mower. If we go like this, it sends the ground from the coil to the frame, shuts it off. I also have the kill switch here still installed. So we'll put that in the on position. We'll put this one in the on position. My throttle's now hooked up. Choke off. <laughs> Video bombers. More video bombing.
All right, we are officially stuck. I'll go get the tractor and pull it out. Oh, I still got to do running boards and stuff. We'll see. lock the crocs in. Cell phone in the dry box. So I know what you're thinking, can Emily with the same tires, they're two inches wider, it's got more power, can it go to that same spot? I doubt it. So the question will be, can Cub Cadet pull out stuck Emily? Let's see. So Emily has a 20, probably 20 horse V-Twin Briggs. It used to have a 20 horse Kohler, but now it's a V-Twin Briggs. Anyway, it has four times the horsepower, wider tires, more speed. Did I think it was stuck? Yes. Did it make it through? Sure. Did the locked in Crocs help? Yes. Is my phone still dry? I hope so. Remember that one time when I tried to pop a wheelie on the other side? That was cool. So this nice stainless steel grill, it needs to be trimmed up a little bit. It don't fit just right, but it looks better with than without. And it's simply held in with these little spring clips. Right now they're holding on to each other. So when we get to paint this, we'll take this back out, maybe trim it up so it fits a little bit better. And I want this to be nice, pretty black, the hood to be shiny white, the international symbol will be replaced. It'd be a good looking tractor. So on my running boards, this is what I'm thinking. Use this, cut off about 14 inches. Use that hole, this hole, and I'm thinking cut this in half. That'll be two brackets. Use this and this, cut them off, bend 90 degree, 90 degree. Good short rock slider looking running board. And on the other side, there is a brake pedal. If we do the same 14 inches, mount it the same way, make it match, uh, the brake pedal can go down past the running board will stop right about here. Use that hole, use that hole just like on the other side, get rid of this junk, and it will not interfere with the brakes back there. Let's go for it. So 
So I've got the running board cut to length. I've got one of the brackets. We're going to use that hole. First, I'm going to make this bracket. Then we'll put this one on. Then we'll mark once it gets level. Let's go look at the other bracket. So on this bracket, I got to heat it up here, bend a 90 degree, and then we'll cut it off whatever length it needs to be. Well, this, the hole's already drilled. We'll have one hole to drill. That straight bracket now has a 90 degree angle. That's what bolts to the tractor, and I gotta figure out how long we're gonna cut it off. So the run board is in place. I've got it set in level. Bracket number one is ready to be welded on. I'm gonna weld it on first, then we'll weld the second one on, then we'll drill a hole, then we're done. I guess we'll paint it, and then we're done. So the running board is finished, it's sitting in place, just sitting in place. I gotta find a bolt long enough to go through. Uh, my bolt's too short. Anyway, in the morning we'll paint it, get it put on, call it done. Then we can start on the other side. So I just painted this arm black, hooked the clutch back up, and maybe the best modification, I took a couple drops of oil here, a couple drops on the other side, listen to this. That sounds a lot better. So I'm painting this running board. If you look on the ground behind the running board, that's not snow, that's sand from the sand blaster last night. I think I might sprinkle a little sand on the running board. So in the background, that's Troy number five. I just did an awesome video at the river in the sand doing wheelies with the locals. You gotta check that one out. I'll leave a link at the end of this video. Anyway, what I just did to the Cub, I was adjusting the brakes on the left-hand side. Let's fire it up and see how they work. So for the last step, and I think I keep saying that, anyway, the uh, running board's dry, that sand gives it really good texture. Lots of good traction on the running board. I'm gonna get this installed, we're gonna call this the end of the video. And my one dilemma, this is my bolt that I took out. The new one is a quarter inch shorter, plus you've got this quarter inch. So I gotta get one more new bolt. I could get some all thread, but I want it to be grade eight. So we'll just wait on that. I do have a bolt for the front. And for test purposes, we'll just pin it. Now, once we get that other bolt, running board on this side is done. I guess the other running board will be in part two. That is what the running board looks like. It looks great to me. Finishing touches. This is a shout out to that Volvo guy. He sent me these stickers. So it is time to test out that running board. And I like the color. Close enough yellow turned out to be just right. I want to do the whole tractor in that color. That could be an episode two thing. Speaking of episode two, I don't have a name for this mower yet. If you want your name on this mower, sometime in the next month, if you want to go to my Venmo, I'll put my Venmo on the screen here. Uh, if you want to go on there and leave more than everybody else, which might be a quarter, might be a dollar, we'll start at a quarter. If you want to do a quarter, you can have your name on here. And I'll do a Facebook post saying who's in the lead and what the current name is. Cub Billy, Cub Susie, whatever. More examples from the past. I have Commander Emily, that was a Patreon. Uh, Lieutenant Dan Johnson, that was a Patreon. Um, Major Dan Murray, that was a Patreon. Kevin one time did a super chat. That was, he. now my bug's named Kevin. 
So if you want your name on this, um, go to my Venmo, follow the Facebook, see who's in the lead, and by the time the next video comes out, we'll have a name already picked out for this guy. And thanks for watching. If you watch this far, you got to be a uh, true fan. True fans should have their name on this mower. Just my opinion. So here in the garage, I've been decorating with tags. Let me show you a picture of that. Anyway, I just came back from a road trip on the side of the road. I found this. We stopped on the side of the road randomly. I got out. We were switching drivers, and this was on the side of the road. It's already expired, so I'm thinking they've already replaced it. Anyway, uh, if you want to shout out for your channel, maybe you don't want to do the Venmo, but you want to shout out for your channel, if you want to send me a message on the back of a tag, I can hang the tag up in the garage. I can read this in a video and get you a shout out for your channel. Mine was Chet 327, found on the side of the road, October 2023. Uh, let's put this one up on the wall. This one was found in an antique shop. It was three bucks. I got it because I've been to Oklahoma somewhere in the past. And while I was in Texas, I got this one from the same antique shop. I got that one. And no pressure, if you want to go to Venmo, try to get your name on this mower, that's fine. If you want to send a tag, again, no pressure on that. Uh, here's the address where you send it to. Tags, whatever you want to send. Let's get these put up on the wall. This is my tag collection so far. It's mostly Florida. There's a Missouri up there somewhere. And I'm going to add these. I'll add whatever you send me. That's all I have now. If you want to send one and get you a shout out, we'll continue on down. And if you wonder about the street signs, some of them came out of dumpsters, some of them, it was all demolition stuff. I used to work for a demolition company. Anyway, if you want to send a tag or a sign or whatever you want to send.